Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Scales Above uh, uh, on Paradise Productions. Uh, uh, wherever you are in the world, you're most likely watching this on the YouTubes. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, we are here to present a uh, 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 Rise of Tiamat adjacent campaign. This is one of a, a later season. Um, we've so go back and watch if you haven't, but hope, glad, ha, glad to have you all here. Um, I play the glorious, uh, amazing... Uh, the glorious godling, Sean, the alliteration the glorious, right there. <sighs> the glorious, glamorous oh. godling. There you go. Uh, weaver <laughs> of the threads of time and why me, uh, space, uh, and bad dad becoming, okay dad, becoming a uh, uh, real human boy. Oryx Solaris. And that's that's why I play. I'm also the creative director of Paradise Productions, so welcome. I turn it over to Shannon now. She's hey, community hello. Manager. God damn it. I haven't why done it in I weeks. I haven't done it in weeks and I had to. I couldn't okay. help it. Shannon, like Shannon, what do you do around here? What do you do around here? Fucking no. So I guess I do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, as Nova said and so rudely took for me. I am the community manager around here in the around these parts of <laughs> the around these, first, this town. Around this around this town. Welcome. We're so happy that you're here. Uh yeah. She's the sheriff uh, of paradise. <laughs> the oh <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> trying to combine, trying to combine sheriff and come in paradise and got parish so <laughs> sheridice you're the parish i'm the sheridice shannon the sheridice anyway yes i'm the community <laughs> manager uh i uh manage our community and do a lot of interacting <laughs> with uh some awesome people in the ttrpg space i also play our uh chaos trash panda of a pirate on mondays on our second campaign of our flagship show yeah. advantage of paradise this campaign is called adrift in aldor and it's so much fun um what else what else i am one half of the sean and shannon power hour bet you can't guess who the other half of that is uh and um, some guy named tim <laughs> <laughs> hey he used to be <laughs> oh my gosh oh the sillies are so contagious um but tonight this morning, wherever you are in the time time zone era, uh, um, the time <laughs> sphere. The time sphere. <laughs> I am playing Sloane, one of two barbarians in the party who no longer has her rage and is trying to figure out a way how to deal with that because that's really all she's kind of ever known. Um, that and uh, her determination to learn how to read by her glorious teacher, the glorious got glorious glamorous godling i got it i got there i got there there's Weavers more there's of, more to the title weaver, weaver of timey wimey Orc. yeah okay that's good enough, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna throw this 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 piece of paper that's on fire over to, over to sarah hi everybody um i'm sarah Oshro, whatever uh i'm playing our second barbarian t um who is just a flaming ball of fire at this point she's just, she's doing her best to help out she's a bit of a hot mess um but she means well um and that's the biggest problem about it but she's cute about it so it's all okay um uh yeah i i i'm playing the little tig she she has rage um she's just I don't know how you describe it. She's um uncomplicated. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it. Uncomplicated doesn't know her own strength. It's like a a large lap pet. They don't know they're not a lap pet. Um, so as the pet of the party, I'm gonna then pass it over to the DM of the game. Hi, my name is Nova. Uh, I'm the DM. Nice to meet you. Uh, anyways, this is my homebrew world. It is also a hot mess at the moment, uh, because everyone keeps trying to um, blow it up. The party is currently undergoing some interesting trials in a cavern, uh, and to explain what's been going on, I'm going to give this back to Sean. So, take it away, Sean. 
Uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> in simple terms, uh, we're stuck in the uh, the recycling bin of the universe, um, where <laughs> lost ideas, memories, and gods come to die and slowly disintegrate into material to replenish the rest of the universe. Uh, and we're hanging out there because it's also our portable hole goes right there. Because uh, it's no ordinary portable hole. It's an extra store, ordinary portable hole. And this place is called the Cavern of Many Things. And we went through a whole tunnel that was really uh, sad. Um, and people were there were mean to us. <laughs> but we made it out. And now we're in a sunken part of the Feywilds that has gone here. Um, uh, with the Winter Court. Um, we've been hanging out with a guy named Ronsur, who is a dick, um, to me at least, uh, but generally probably a nice guy as far as face spirits go. Um, and he's been guiding us through here uh, and um, showing us the ropes. Uh, Auric has been unnecessarily uh, suspicious of everything here and afraid of everything here and trying to get the others to also be careful. Um, Tig doesn't really need to worry because Tig is of the Fae. Uh, although Auric is partially of the Fae, he was not uh, apparently Fae. Um, the one he's really worried about is Sloane because Sloane is just a, you know one of those, those, those humans. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, we met, uh, uh, we, we are gaining an audience before the Winter Queen. Um, we're looking for them to basically help us find our way out of here um, to move on. Uh, and there has been some mishaps here and there. Sloane got a dress uh, that she feels very awkward in. Um, uh, there was a, a young, young as in like young in appearance, but several centuries year old fey girl who developed a crush on sloan and tried to have a uh, 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 one-on-one -on -one time and sloan didn't understand and was uh uh subsequently uh, embarrassed the girl and made her angry um and she um put a curse on sloan uh <laughs> and uh we there's other things happened that i'm not quite remembering right now you're going oh, to Sloan, dinner. Sloan is getting, we're going to dinner, but Sloan also got a uh, hamster bald because she developed a, uh, uh, her, her creme brulee addiction kicked in. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and this little face spirit is luring her away uh, with creme brulees. And Auric is like, this is the worst thing that could be possibly happening in my mind. So I, we need to isolate her. So we put her in a wall of force, hamster ball. Uh, and then Tig just hucked her. Uh, away from the creamy brulees and the fae coming after her. And she bounced away into the area, the no-no-go, uh, as I would call it, uh, a no-go zone uh, where we are not under the protection of Ronsur anymore. And now we're getting ready for dinner and hoping Sloane is okay. Yep. Uh, do you remember the last thing that happened in your bowl, Sloane? Did I eat a creamy brulee? You did. You did. Mm -hmm. Um, because younger. Correct me if I'm. That's right. Yes, I de-aged. Yeah, you. Yep. Oh. Yep. De-aged, but got some of my constitution back. Which is nice for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because remind me, everyone. A. What's what's it called? Is a ball of. Hmm. What's the, what's the, what's the spell called? The, the ball? ball of force. It's not quite called a ball of force. It's like a irresistible. What do you ball of force? <laughs> no, he's asking what's about a different of... thing. The, yeah, oh. what is the spell called? The ball of force spell. Oh, wall and... of force. <laughs> oh, did you did you just put a wall of force in a ball, yeah. or did you create the yeah. the sphere one, which is like a level six, I believe? No, no, no. A wall of force you can t put turn into a ball. Okay. Okay. That's okay. why I was a little like, I was like, I don't know how this works when you were like, we hucker. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like, I don't okay. know. <laughs> well, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a DM Rule of fault then. Because my brain yeah. went to 
you're creating that level six sphere one or maybe level five i don't know my book there's right there. no there's there is a sphere one but it's not it's not a ball like this there's sphere of invulnerability i think is what no it there's is. is it there is no, it didn't, I think we used it in the first... or some shit like that. oh i know your resilient sphere Res yes that's it yeah, yeah, but yeah, no yeah. no no that's a fourth level no spell. didn't we use something like that in paradise campaign one like the I'm like glad a, that un unbreakable the... spear or something Something unbreakable. Oh, it looks resilient sphere. Yeah. So that, for some reason, that's what I thought you had done. Um, you probably 100% said. Vitri oh, the vitriolic sphere? Oh, looks resilient sphere, which is just. Yeah. Um, it can't be broken apart from a disintegrate. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really, really good spell. Oh, you're right. That is the only one that can, that, that one can roll. That's a fourth level spell. It's not yeah. higher level. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought you had done for some reason. So because I'm the DM, that, I mean, I'm just I basically the to... way I we used it was that spell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why when you use a wall of force, I'm like, oh, interesting. There's something for this in a sphere. Because the thing is, you can make a wall of force into a sphere, but there's nothing in the description that talks about it like moving around. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to treat it like this for the time being, but the, the question is, while nothing can pass through mm -hmm. a wall of force or, or this sphere even, I don't believe, can things be summoned inside them? So uh, we had this conversation a while ago um, when you were trying to kill Auric. Um, <laughs> Me? Never. <laughs> I've never done that. Um. Da, 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 da. So you can't cast magic out of it. So I'm assuming you can't cast magic into it. Oh, well, let me mm. reread it. Last for the duration. If the wall cuts through a creature's space when it appears, the creature's pushed to one side. Nothing can physically pass through the wall. It is immune to all damage. It can't be dispelled by dispel magic. A disintegrate spell destroys the wall instantly. However, the wall also extends into the ethereal plane, blocking ethereal travel through the wall. Yeah, so, you so and that's more so like walking through it ethereally, but I guess technically, I suppose you could. Depends on how you view uh, teleporting, like what it actually. Well, is. so what I'm talking about is this phase just summoning creme brulees inside the sphere by shaping. So from reality. the description of the spell, it only blocks ethereal and physical movement through. It doesn't say okay. anything about like teleporting good, in or good, out. Good. And also the way we've run it is that you can teleport out because that's how you killed Auric the last time. I've never <laughs> killed Auric. Let's not. <laughs> no. Or, never. Okay, sorry. Sorry, when, when, when Auric was brutalized, had his hand cut off and imprisoned and tortured. When he was unalived. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And it, yeah, because that wasn't quite a teleport. More well, I guess I'd say summoning, die. but yes. Um, yes, that's how I thought it was. I was pretty sure you could summon things inside and out and around and whatever. You just can't. You can't. Um. um move into it but okay so yeah i mean it's it's the kind of thing because it's a it's a see-through wall so you can if you can see inside it you can summon things inside it yeah cool so i'm gonna leave you guys exactly there with uh mock sort of you just hear a giggle and then a little black kitty goes running off through the trees after the ball and you're both left standing in the forest. This is uh, Tig and Auric. What would you like to do? Tig made a boo boo. Um... That's not good. Uh, Should we risk getting into more trouble and going and getting her? We'll proceed with the evening and hope she can handle herself. So perhaps I should not seek counsel. Uh, 
we can either... She's left the sphere of support from Ronso, so we're probably already in trouble. Pig not in trouble. You not in trouble. We're still in circle, so we're okay. Now that is good logic. You start hearing someone call out Weevil. Hello? Because you're in the forest and he's in the clearing where you guys are washing your clothes and making yourself presentable. Oh. Uh, yes. Um, we should go meet with him. Take it. Uh, what, what, what about Sloan? What was even happening with Sloan there? Uh, 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 let, let's walk and talk. Um, okay, okay. So, uh, Sloan have a problem with desserts. Um, Her severe sugar addiction. Yeah, words. Um, Tig don't know, okay? Age don't go that way. She's supposed to get bigger and strong, not tiny and tiny. Well, her life force was drained in the last chamber we were in. That's what made her smaller. What? Something had... Uh, not even... A, a, when Slow we were turning fighting... turning into toddler! Well, no, no, no. And as you leave the I forest, admit, you hear... I was like, oh, she's done it again. Take but do you know what's going on? We're... your friend. He's way out there. Take have good throwing arm. So and I forgot. You are the one that made her leave safety. I, I, I forgot. I was trying to get her away from the creamy brulees. And I forgot I had strong arms. She was being lured away. She would have been lured out of your protective zone regardless, and we just accidentally reversed it to being out on the other side. I forgot. What has happened since I left? Sloane took a walk. She returned. And... Desserts appeared. That she has a proclivity towards. And Who did she walk she... with? Kitty cat. She walked... Oh. Okay. okay. Your friend has been fed childhood. Oh. Yes. Our gut likes to steal. Well. Childhood from children. Apparently it's quite sweet. Are you okay there, Weaver? I'm fine. Can we retrieve our friend before dinner? Uh, I'll send someone to go fetch her. She may not be as you remember. Uh, can, can, can we fix it? She is a short-lived thing. Take the extra time as a gift. What? Well, what? how old was she when she got here? It's hard to tell with um, that I don't time. Know. 30? 16, 80, 32, 40? This, this many? Prob probably too many. I've been around mortals in the past, maybe 30 to 40. Depending on how much she eats, she could be 20, 15, 5. 
<laughs> that kind of that, no 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 that kind of, no that can't be I understand it can be that's not what I'm saying I'm saying that if you wish for her to age you would need to take time from the elderly in effect killing them bring me so, that portion of their life and I can age her so if we me, leave so if we leave her as she is she just age normal correct but would it be faster for your people to go get her or for us I'll send someone of friends that can move through the forest very quickly if needed. You can always give her some of me. I think it's very odd. I think. I don't know. Or also, if we have sufficient of these childhood desserts, I could always age her to 30 days till death and then have her no, eat no, as no, many no, no, of no, these no. as possible to get her back to whatever she was, 42, 30, How do you age 14? 30 days from death? I, mm. He keeps that secret. His he eyes must do, but does Tig not know about it. You have your spell book on you, don't you? Always, but it's in a cipher. He must be smart enough to read it. His eyes mm -hmm. flick down to the spellbook, then back up to you. How do you age people? Like anything else, magic. Would you be keen to share such magic? In most situations, no. In nearly all situations, no. But nothing is certain. So can we go go I, slow now? I have friends looking for her. Don't worry. As Let's... far as I'm concerned, there is nothing in this place here. You can offer. Hmm. Take Tigaria. See That's that me. tall marble white structure? He points to the only tower in this area. Mm hmm. Walk towards it. Mention my name when you get there. And you'll be let in. Okay. Weaver, walk with me. No, oh, no. <laughs> Where are we taking a stroll? The towel. Fair enough. I'd like to see the book, please. That is, uh, not in, as they say, the books. As you're walking, make a perception check. Gladly. Gladly. 23. You'll notice that you're walking, but the surroundings don't change. It's like you're walking on the spot. You are moving, but nothing else is. Well, I knew a shaman who could do the reverse of this a long time ago. You say we have nothing to offer, but you don't know what we know. I have been. I'm sure there's quite a lot you know. But I don't like it here. It does something to me. Petulance comes out that I'm not a fan of. You. <laughs> Those have always been petulant. But more so here, today at least, for me. 
you were going to use a spell that aged someone 30 days till death. Such spells are not so easily trifled. I understand the gravity of said spell. I understand it perfectly. I have suffered its aftermaths and understanding. I have seen what it does, and I know the precariousness of it. So why would you not trust me, Weaver? Because I barely trust myself with it. Yes, again, you were going to use it on a friend. <sighs> when you spend so much time with mortals, so closely, for over a year, you begin to develop some of their habits, such as sarcasm, or uh, throwing out stupid ideas. Well, it was incredibly stupid. Do you really think I was going to do that? The problem is, tiny godling, your words have weight. Things you say reverberate and stamp themselves onto the universe. Be careful. <sighs> For the hundredth or so time I understand you're not the first to warn me of these things you won't be the last to warn me of these things why do you dislike me so you seem so short tempered this place reminds me of things I don't like about myself I would have thought that as a winter thing, you find this darkness to your liking. Oh well, every day I, like any of my kind, especially those who have seeked, sought terrible things and those darknesses, have a healthy fear of that which enraptures our mind. And that peace. Oh yes. As I know. It's comfort. And what comfort it could bring me here. And I. Refuse it. You understand that you'd have to give up that book to leave then I will are you saying that you will not let me leave unless I give this book up the only way you leave is by having an audience with the Empress <laughs> and she would not let and I would not let a weapon of such power in her presence you can give it to the Winter Guards, or to me. Well, I do not mind leaving myself of such powers to appear before your Empress. I insist that you are not to meddle. I hereby swear that I shall not harm the book in any way. I will not alter the book in any way, nor shall I keep it from you. You may ask for it once you have left my lady's presence, and it will be returned to you in the hour. This I swear. Well, as much as I'm distrustful of the Fae, at least I can trust your words for the most part. I feel like you're looking at your inside bonus right now. 
<laughs> shush shush <laughs> i saw your screens change and i was like wait a minute <laughs> oh i trust you insight <laughs> i you've caught me i would like to insight check him go for it <laughs> Ugh. Um, I am going to I'd also like you to make a performance check to keep any expression from your face as you like look him up and down <laughs> with this because I feel like the way you've been speaking you'd at least raise an eyebrow in disbelief at what he just said if you're going to be inside him uh, I I don't even want to roll that i'm gonna say he can he can like i'm not like oh yeah i rolled bad anyway got an 11 but i'm gonna say like i would have there was no world where he wasn't gonna <laughs> suspect that i'm all equally suspicious of him um my insight was not super high um and i just realized i don't have any chromal shifts to, to shift it so i'm just gonna go with it um because i forgot we haven't done a long rest in a thousand years um <laughs> so uh that is a 15. Okay. You say you believe me, but I see doubt. I am... Bay of the Bright Court. Here, because I believe my lady was... had a serious crime inflicted on her. And I would not leave her to fate. I am bound to tell the truth in all things. I cannot lie. Not without my power being undone, the one I love. you still doubt? I suppose not. You and your lady understand where you are, right? We do. Why do you think we've taken an interest in you as opposed to just using you as sustenance. I was curious. Fair enough. I'll surrender the book. He holds out his hand. Would you allow me one portion? What is it? It's the binding upon the book. I you... believe you. But... Uh... Never mind. I've grown... It too. I forgot my man. And he, I'll take the book out. Takes it. He holds it in his hand and it hovers in the air for a second. And then just blows away in the wind as it just illusions into a alternate dimension. <laughs> I could do that too. Same. And that's and that's a sign of of my honesty. Because I would have just hated. Very well. Shall we continue? I suppose. Will you be taking all manner of potential artifact off of us? I shall, but yours was dangerous to start with. 
Mm. Knowledge is power, Weaver. Then I will offer up one la one more thing, to show of good faith. I will give the staff to him, like this, hand him the staff. He looks at it. Hmm. Do you intend this to be a symbol of your office? Yes. At some point. And what do you wish your office to be? Speak honestly. <clears throat> well, I suppose so. Uh, based on the small worship I have received, and I suppose based on my own personal wishes or endeavors. An argument for fate, an argument for records of some sort, ordering, based on promises I have made, that last one seems prompt or desired by others. In my heart, I just wish to make things better, more fair. Fairness, when viewed through such a narrow scope, is actually blind. Mm. Law. Anyways, your dinner awaits. I'm sure the Lord of Ceremonies has sat your guest. And I have been informed that your errant friend is in attendance. She left my protection and as such is not exactly a guest of honor. What does that mean for this dinner? Has she been resigned to a lower status in the supper? Do right by the lady myself and I will work towards her. Oh, I see. Even lower status than I had assumed. Oh, well. Fair enough. Well, <clears throat> and I will straighten out the attire I've created and uh, look at him and say, Dinner time, I suppose. Yes. And with your next step, you're now just in front of the tower. Um, Tig. You get there, you're ushered in, and the Lord of Ceremonies, the, the Mater D, so to speak, is there and he makes sure if you have a coat he takes it if you have anything you need to give over he takes it you are not allowed to have any weaponry here uh, so if you have any you can, obviously your arm has been transformed into like a thin um sleek sort of wooden arm oh oh um you can just give up the whole bag if you wish i wish to give up the bag and a bucket and I'll put a button in the bucket. Actually, okay. no, I'm going to keep the button, please, and I'll pin it on like a brooch. All right. 
I have to open Discord for a moment, so my whole screen might go funny for those watching, and I apologize. Okay. It did! So my whole outfit, as before in previous episode, plus now there's a little black shiny button brooch on the side. Okay. So, um... Yes. As you hand that over, you are you enter like a it was like an inner courtyard inside the tower, um, and through this dark forest lit by one moonlight, you are led to a um, long marble table, sort of like almost grown out of the ground, as opposed to carved. It looks very natural to be here. Uh, the chairs have um backings of of vines and when you sit in it would be very comfortable and soft uh gracefully shaped gold and silver around the inside of this courtyard outside of this courtyard i guess both the same thing um reflect pale light in this sort of dazzling dazzlingly beautiful display that makes the air feel thick like you're moving through a dream um, and nothing feels quite real in here. There is a spot for Auric at the end of the table, and then you next to him. The far end is in shadow, that even with your, uh, enhanced vision you cannot see through. The Lord of Ceremonies pulls out your chair, um, and... He says, I will need from you two things, madame. Uh, we need you to imbue a hair with one of your finest, happiest memories, and another with your worst, saddest, most frightening times. Uh, it is part of your entrance, part of the entertainment. Last I was cast upon silence. Um, no, that's okay. Um, it's I Tig don't need to know why. It's okay. You have rules, and Tig listen to rules. Why I'm here because I am guest. Um, these two okay? Hold it up. Uh, I'm going to pick one from. Uh, uh this any so Andy shakes it for a second and this illusion falls out of you sitting on the ground and there's like 10 to 15 halflings and gnomes all between the age of three and eight playing with you and like like oh you can't hear them but they're like you know arms up for you to like Uppies. throw them in the air yeah up is yes um and then he shakes another one, and someone of fairly similar appearance to Auric has smoke leaking from their eyes. Their mouth unhinges, and this void appears as they lean over to take a bite out of someone, and sort of just this, and they just suck the soul from them. He's like, hmm, these are fantastic specimens, thank you. Yes, that's okay. Can can I have some back later, or do do I lose those? Cause he just smiles sad. and walks away. Oh, okay. It's, it's sad, but it may take who Tig is. Uh, Sloane. That's me. You are. This we're gonna go back in time just a little bit. Um, you hit the ground in your little bowl, rolling along, Ugh. and every few minutes another little creamy brulee appears, and this little black kitty starts pushing the ball, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, then it's a goes great image down a little hole. And gets lodged in the back of a cave where you see spiderwebs 
moths trapped in them. Two or three skeletons picked clean on the floor. Humanoid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just had a funny... <laughs> something funny in my brain, sorry. I'll, I'll have just stuffed a creme brulee in my mouth, but I'll like... <laughs> take it back out. Okay. <laughs> just... Just kind of hold it and look look around. You see, having coming out of sorry, go ahead. That's all right. You see, in the darkness, uh, you hear this, meow, and then these just two glowing cat eyes appear about ten feet in front of you. Where am I? The eyes sort of move. You, it's so dark you don't really see this black cat. Just the eyes sort of move the size of Cox's head. It does not answer my question. Why is it so dark? Where are my friends? Who are you? There's a small skittering sound around you. And what looks to be a small swarm of spiders start pulling the webbing around the orb covering it no 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 that that's okay no it's dark enough no yeah fluttering of wings outside and the cat <sighs> and then it goes outside and you hear this little voice no 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 i wanna i wanna i wanna i wanna fine and A little, little group of hummingbirds come in and pick off the spider web. And with effort, push you out of the cave. Can I help? <laughs> you are being slowly lifted into the air at this point. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> One of them hecks the wall of force and it becomes a ball of shaped crystal with you inside and you can hear music playing you are heading towards this tall marble structure ah. and as you descend the birds pick clean the rest of this thing you are placed in a small like little round yep. shape on a stage next to a tall harp and a lute next to it. There is a small uh, sort of like drum there as well. And the lute and the harp have no strings. Okay. You have a tall, elegant looking woman who seems to glide towards you more than walk. I wish for you to grant me two things, young one. Me? Yes, you. I, 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 I think there has been a mistake. I, I don't have magic. I want you to take one of your happiest memories and one of your sadness and give them to me. Why? Also, you will be who are team. you? What? I am the lady of this Oh. Um. Okay. You can either and grant me there. one of each, or I could take them all. But I find no. it's best you get to choose. Do I have to give them to you? You do. Why? 
Do you feel you're in a situation? Ask these questions. Perhaps it's best if you just play along. Hmm? Okay. I want you to take a hair from your head. Think very hard of one of your saddest memories. Then push the hair against the edge of this glass. I'll kind of like run my hands through my hair and then focusing on it and I'll tell you which I'll I'll text you which one it is. Okay. And I'll pluck the hair and press it. Okay, and it just kind of like swims through the crystal to fall out the other side into her waiting hand. And now the same. Think of something happy. Fills you with joy. Do you do the same thing? Yeah. Um this one's easier. I don't I don't need to think about it as much. I I take it and do it right away. My daughter says you made her very unhappy. I, it, she was asking questions I didn't know how to answer. I didn't mean it. I think we mean everything we do. Would it help if I apologized? Perhaps. And asked to start again? But actions speak louder than words. So tonight you'll be our entertainment. And you watch as she takes your two hairs of memory and she strings the harp with two of them. Two, two strings on the harp with it. You look young and full of vigour. That dress is very pretty. Thank you. Let's see how the night plays out for you. And she just sort of glides backwards away and the shadow just around her and she disappears. Can I see like anything else besides like around the room besides um besides the harp and the, the loot and this glass sphere? No, but after about five minutes, you hear Teague talking to someone. Do I see her? Yep. Hmm. When you came down, I'd say you probably had to see the table, the entrance, the, you know, Lord of Ceremonies, th that. You didn't see any other guests, but you kind of got an idea of the shape of this place. It's like a long hmm. rectangular area. It's, um, the floor is this uh, very lush grass. There is a large sort of oak chair thrown. It's very, it was very hard to make out the shape of it as you came down from the top. And then the back wall by the stage is uh, tall trees, oak trees. All, all meant to give a feeling of uh, being alive, forests, elegance, and, and long livedness, longevity. Okay. So, as you enter the area, Weaver, and Sir looks to you, the Lord of Ceremonies is busy. Apparently, he is dealing with uh, Tig's dinner order. Oh, you may have some trouble sourcing her persuasions. The kitchens are confused. Did she ask for fingers? <laughs> you don't ask for things here. <sighs> How many guests are there tonight? 
Two. That's not. The court aren't really guests. They will be here watching. Not necessarily seated at the table, but you will be able to see them if you look hard enough. Tonight's dinner will be a serving of memories, truths, and fate. Before you sit, Lightly. I will need you to imbue one of your hairs with one of your happiest memories. Of course. And one with one of your saddest. My most favorite. Painful. Delightful. Do you have something in mind already? I can come up with something. I find these things easier if you give them willingly. Perhaps tell me what they are. He holds out a hand. <sighs> I know you do not like it here. Whether that is these caverns or just this corner of this one. But you will do well. Building relations, making allies. I am trying to build a rapport here. <clears throat> Fair enough, Monsieur. <sighs> these, I have to pluck hair too, or am I not yeah. just like bleh. You <laughs> pluck a hair. <clears throat> And I, I see you would see I would pull one of my hairs out taut and it would almost become a gold thread mm -hmm. uh, uh, as it would pluck it off and as I let it go it would gently fall into his hand and the gold shimmer would sort of go away and he would have it for the happy memory which is what illusion does he see as it falls uh, so the illusion, uh, and what, when these illusions, are they just sort of like this ghostly illusion around you or is it okay. generally just a small uh, illusion around the hair? Oh, okay. So yeah, as that, uh, gold light fades, it would almost like it would come together into set a few figures and then rise up. You would see one very clearly auric silhouette of, of gold. Um, and then a, another silhouette that kind of shifts back and forth between a small girl and then a very big girl <laughs> it would shift between a a little half elvish girl and a very large uh barbarian girl um and it would be a memory of Oric teaching uh uh the people he loves most how to read uh and one of them is his daughter and one of them is sloan um and it sort of melds between the two and the entire time there's a for third person there but their silhouette is faded and almost completely gone of a human woman okay and the other <clears throat> orc would extract another one i would extract another one and this one would have a silver light to it and i would let that drop into his hands uh, which again, the silhouettes would come up and you would see a frantic, pleading, weeping auric on his knees, hands and knees, with uh, um, Sloane. Um, who else was there? Oh my god, my brain is forgetting everything. Pretty sure it was uh, Sloane. It was everyone. Because uh, Nia was inside yeah. the warehouse. Okay, so it's Sloane and Tig. Uh, wrapping their arms around him as he's holding his hand out, holding a jar. And there's a jar on the ground as he's just killed Saros. The dead body of Saros is there, and uh, his memories were all returned, or his soul was returned to him in this moment, and the crushing weight of uh, all of the his experiences over the time of losing his soul, hitting him all at once, hitting me all at once, was the worst feeling he's ever experienced in his entire existence. Hmm. They shall do. And he just sort of blows them away, and they 
head off down the length of this table. You are to be seated at the end here. Well, dinner will be ready in ten minutes. Of course. I are don't there... want... Yes. Are there refreshments? What do you wish? What does the house suggest? Mm. I'll have your finest, whatever it is. First spirits or wine? Wine. I've seen what the spirits have done to some of my comrades, and it is, uh, they get quite irresponsible. Are you weary from your travels? Most. Well. I think what would pair well with dinner be you. A good berry wine fortified with the soul of a druid. <laughs> if this is what the house suggests. And he walks away and will come back in a few minutes with time. Uh, in the meantime, you're sitting there with Tig. Um, and you Tig, notice... You would see Auric, you would see me just sort of sit, sit down very curtly next to you. And, and just sort of whip whatever napkin is there, fluff it out and put it on my lap and pout a little bit. Make a perception check, you too. Another 23. Nine. Okay. That's okay. Get to that in a minute then. I'll sort of reach forward and grab my napkin. Um, do I do I do that too? Make an intelligence Just check. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm terrible. No. What'd you get? A three on the dice. And with your minus two, that is what? A one. Oh. It's actually a minus three. <laughs> okay. Be be <laughs> before you can tell her to stop, <laughs> she hasn't taken the napkin, she's taken the tablecloth, and as she does this, everything on the table just whoosh towards her. And Russell comes out holding the wine and just looks and he's just like... Your wine, Ooh. sir. And he will sip some. This is going to be an interesting night. <sighs> All the silverware. All the glasses, like the crystal wine glasses, everything is just piled around you. Dick? Uh, oh, I'm just not will... trying to like put it back. <laughs> I will uh, cast mending on anything that broke with this. I'm just this, gonna get the uh... pile of glass in bits and just drop it in front of you. Just and. Uh, some ethereal spiders will come and put them back together with, with ethereal webs. I wouldn't do that here, Weaver, unless you wish to offend. Well, fair enough, I'll stop. Let's watch a spider. Out. The Lord it of Ceremonies will this. And as he walks away, this tall very tall, very thin, like sort of freakishly, like slender man looking dude comes stretched. Yeah, walking out in a <sighs> long, 
black suit where the um, coat of it reaches the floor and is in tatters and shredded. He is barefoot with dirty feet and the bottom of his pants are all looking muddy and torn as well. He is wearing his... he has a, uh, a, a cloak and hood up and he has a plague doctor mask. And he sits there and scrapes a chunk of dirt out of the ground. The plague mask, where it's like stitched together, stretches open and he slides this dirt in. And you see it's like clack like a beak for a second. And then he spits into the air this clod of chewed dirt and it sort of unfolds a new tablecloth, silverware, glass, and as it hits the ground, there's these small popping noises as all the silverware and glass that was broken and ruined disappears. He swings his head towards you. Please don't do that again. Sorry. He one-handed drags your chair back, puts a napkin on your lap, and then looks at you, sighs, and then ties a second one around you like a bib <clears throat> before pushing your chair in. We appreciate your hospitality and, 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 and understanding. It nods to you. Did not be here momentarily. I'm certain it will be delightful. And he moves away. There's a <laughs> at the head of the table. And the shadow pulls back until just this glowing face appears. It appears glowing more because of the contrast between the light and dark. And it is the most stunningly beautiful female face you have ever seen. Um, any of you trying to make any sort of charisma checks or, or saves will be at disadvantage just because you're in the presence of the empress of the winter court it's a good thing tig's charisma is so high in this place <laughs> yeah so i'd be rolling normal won't i uh Yay. small fires alight and those reflected gold and silvers catch and focus the light towards a crystal sphere there is a large drider playing a harp there is a small swerf neblin playing on the drum and it's Fatalfa playing the lute and you need to make a charisma save please Sloan uh oh uh oh uh also disadvantage uh huh <laughs> while that's happening Oric will lean over I'll lean over to Tig and be like let's do what I do Yes. Uh -oh. yeah, cool. You really think that's a good idea? So far, Tig not do a good job doing what you do. Got a one, a natural one. For a three total. You start dancing against your will. You oh are God, effectively <laughs> a, uh, a ballerina <laughs> inside this crystal spear. You're effectively a ballerina in a music <laughs> box right now, with ah! your strings being pulled. Making these the very, making oh, very no. graceful moves, 
but I look so panicked. <laughs> Your... Music's perfect right now for me. It's this sort of slow balladic sound coming from the uh, musicians and your shoes that you're wearing know the steps you need to take <laughs> and the they're fan spell the fancy shoes yes but the spell pulls the rest of your body and arms into place so you are dancing Ew. like uh you know a world class so, you're so great dancer yes <laughs> Which is great, because Shannon never took ballet, so <laughs> this is really interesting. <laughs> Shannon just likes to stomp on the floor and tap. <laughs> well, maybe you can do that later. <laughs> um, so. Weaver. What brought you here? What is it that you weave? I have heard... No tails, and I see no bolts of fabric. Mansur says you've already spoke one falsehood since being here. Now I claim that you lie yet again by giving a name that is not yours. Hmm. A name I was given. By my first worship. And you would... Give such a gift freely? Hmm. <sighs> For such a great call, I suppose. Then I say you did not lie, and I take your name, Weaver, along with all worship it bestows. <laughs> that I cannot offer. It is too late, it is done. You gave your name already. I suppose I am at your mercy, Empress. When you have come here looking for something, and perhaps I could be the one to grant it, give it, Maybe I'll need more in return than your first worshipper in name. I don't know how far this spreads yet. Maybe do me enough favor and I could return it. What should I call you now that I am the weaver and you are nothing? Or will you in nothing. fact be nothing and fall away into this cosmic end well I suppose this trash heap is the fate of us all if I'm not able to escape this place you may call me Auric Auric lovely what brings you here Auric Solaris <clears throat> well, me and my companions were in the most dire of situations seeking refu refuge, sanctuary, protection, fast route away from the, that which sought our end. We just so happened to fall into just nigh of oblivion. And as 
the music plays its melancholy sounds. You see illusions of Oryx stalk through the hall, courtyard, I should say, towards the crystal and start yelling at Sloane how stupid she is. Make a wisdom save, Sloane. Having a really bad day. Really bad day. And this is just a straight roll, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Your dancing becomes a bit more frantic, and the music starts to swell a little bit. <laughs> Do you like the entertainment, Warwick? I understand the appeal. It is good to be reminded of our past. What we've lost, what we've done, what was done to us. We can make sure these things don't happen again. A plate is slid in front of you. It looks like a shadowy morass that is also meat. Hmm. I'm certain these memories will be... filling. I hope so. Before you start, I should ask that everyone at this table make a promise, a toast, an oath, but just through this dinner, no one here speak a word alive, everything the truth. By doing so, you will feel more fulfilled, more refreshed than you ever have. Speak a lie, and you feel empty, maybe too weak to go on. This will be a... And she waves a hand and you see this thread connect from her and so to you two. There's a small glowing ball that is almost touching both of your chests. This is the balance of power in this room currently. Speak truths, will be sent it. If you lie, our power grows and yours diminishes. You understand? Uh -huh. And is that <laughs> dynamic? Does this dynamic? Well, I suppose is it dynamic? You lie, will. Same happened to you. Not that I yes. prefer to see you lying, but could you give a demonstration of and and so waves a hand across his chest, disconnecting, and then mm -hmm. moves next to you. And then holds out his hand for you to shake. I will shake. And he winces as he says, I am of the winter court. For the next two rounds, you're level 20 in all classes. <laughs> what? He just oh, dumped. Really? He just dumped power into Auric. Oh, because he God. lied. Yeah. How does wow. ha how does handsome look? Yeah. He, what is it? What happens to him? His head dulls a little bit. And his cheeks sink for just a second before they fill back out to normal. It just, it is such a tiny amount of his personal power that it doesn't really matter. It's just like, it kind of felt like he got a needle to him. He's like, ah, it's annoying. But that's yeah. about it. Okay, I'll be like, oh, <laughs> meanwhile. You, you okay? You, you, you need, do you need a hand to walk back? It, Are you okay? He shakes his head. There's a reason that they have survived here comfortably. And it's because it's going to take a long time for the universe to digest them it 
So, unless there's something you instantly want to do with this power, Auric, you're going to... It's going to no, it's drain out of you very quickly, because it's not yours to really hold on to. If it was a... And he'll, he'll actually explain as he moves to the end. Please sneeze, Sparkles. If I was to continually imbue you with such power, it would become yours, stable. Such a small burst. This place will devour it shortly. I see. Sustained lying and manipulation lead towards greater ebbs and flows that can be sustained. That's fair. I understand. And I agree. You need to be careful, little god. We have, and the universe understands, that lying through truths is acceptable. But lies for lies is not. I understand. I Good. don't. You tell the truth, and everything shall be fine. Okay, so Tig do normal. Oh, um, I'm gonna break off a little flower. And, um, um, I Tig don't want to get up and ruin table again. So can you please give to pretty lady? Uh, he just makes a twisting motion with his hand, and this little breeze comes along, and it just down the end. Such a good job. Okay. So she cuts into the meat and eats a piece, and flickers of war surround you of elves and dwarves fighting against demons and devils. Rick will follow, I will follow suit, given that the host of the evening has begun eating Oric will into his meat it's the same for you you just more solidify this it's the same you're taking her memories of mm. a great war against evil <laughs> and is, is the war going on in like a cave or something or is this out it if, if you if you it's like a battlefield uh the, as far the as edges aware, of the food is not you you have the same food. You have meat. Oh, okay, well. sorry, sorry. Yeah, all of um, our food is, is yeah. just the same. The edges of the courtyard seem to fall away, and it's just this endless battlefield and like mountains in the distance and big scaries all happening everywhere. Using oh. a knife and fork. Gods, take uh, let me cut your meat for you. Thank you. I'll just stab them both into the meat. And and and, and I will. I will like 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 a parent uh <laughs> cut like five to ten pieces of meat ready there for a take and I say let me know if you're ready for more. Thank you. Sloan. <laughs> Is there anything you wish to do? Anything you wish to say to these oryx that are berating you? Am I still dancing erratically? You are still not erratically, very gracefully. You Very are gracefully. Perfect little dancer. I want to stop. <laughs> um, I would, I would, in, I would kind of like be talking to the people outside of the, uh, um, whoever's controlling the 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 dancing. I would be alternating talking to that, to them, and to these oryx that are berating me, going back and forth between. Please make. Well, actually, no. I'd be. I, I take that back. I would be saying to everybody, please make it stop. And the musicians are ignoring you, and they're the ones, effectively, three of them all casting the same spell on you, so it's overlapping. Um, and the oryx stride past, and they start to change from just the memory to like new things. Um, you know, not just being like, oh you're stupid you can't read to being like you never think for yourself why can't you just do the right thing as they're strolling past you and it's just building and building and building 
and like I like I know I'm not in control of of my arms, but like I'm like trying to like cover my ears as I'm dancing, but they just like keep shooting past and like going back and forth into these new I'm, like motions. Into I'm imagining the, the very yeah. dramatic ballet stuff where they start like throwing themselves in directions <laughs> and it's you doing that like towards and away from the oryx Try. as you're like yeah. Try. Yes. <laughs> very much interpretive dancing this. Um I love it. <laughs> oryx. What is it you wish from your time here, apart from a quick passage through the world? What is it you need? What can I do for you? As her face seems to like loom out of the shadow, but not actually come any further out, it just kind of like gets to her neck. But it. First, a superb meal. A uh, perfect accountants. A glorious visage to consume. I am very glad you've enjoyed the first of the nine courses. Nine. A mighty number. I suppose, Empress, I'm uncertain what I want from you, given that I suppose I did not expect to meet you today, see you today. I'm not lying when I say that our only desires, at least our carnal, uh, primal desires as soon as we came here were to seek safety and escape. Something that everyone who comes here seeks is not the core of you. What do you need? What do you wish beyond this place? Coming here, what you do here reflects what you need out there. You are a god, Lara. There's a reason for that. You hadn't discarded yourself of worship, so maybe you have more that you want. I suppose that is part of the problem. Their want never satisfies. I suppose what it is given never satisfies, and that is what has led me into many a trouble. And I've learned from spending time with mortals, with those of the short lives. But there is more that you can do. There are, there is grace in the hardships that they endure to achieve their ends. Indeed, why do you think mortal worship is so important? Why do you think it grants such power? Human gods wrestled power from Helm, Arkvay. They have created demons and devils. I suppose there is nothing greater or more challenging to the cosmos than a mind that is beset by so many things all around it that are beyond it, that want to eat it, devour it. It creates fears, and those fears create creatures. Well. Nightmares. Just as much as it creates dreams. You wish out of this place, so here is my first lesson to you, child. What we do matters. Maybe more than you know. 
think of the world and she just throws her hand out and you see this like long silvery arm come out and a another sheet hovers maybe an inch above the table this sheet is the mortal world and this table under here is reality as it wishes to be the universe and its own consciousness material and power when you do something that catches attention and there's a whistle and then a loud ringing thud and screech as a nail falls from the sky and embeds in the marble table pinning the sheet to the table the rest of it is still so it's like now like this and it just kind of nails in nails out you have made a mark with such a action that grabs attention from those around you more minds are focused on an event and it gains how it self perpetuates other things nearby and then she casts her goblet into the air and the wine gravity pulls. yes something i've been told you have an affinity for you need i would stand up and kind of walk closer to this demonstration <laughs> Or if it's right in front of me on the table, I would stand up to lean closer to it. Yeah, you can if you wish. Food off his plate. Yeah. Try it. Off his plate, it doesn't taste as good. <laughs> when you make large actions, and you have made some already, but you have done so mostly isolate you have been a uh, a force in the world but not always one that grabs attention do you still wish to change everything yes And she turns and shows the dancing Sloan at the back, who is currently, as an auric, saying, Do you think I need your protection? I control powerful magics. You are nothing, you stupid girl. No, I don't think they got my voice quite right. Yeah, look, I'm... Shut up, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a little credit. I could... I was sitting Billion there... Oryx. I didn't want to... I didn't want to, like, do too close to you because I realized it sounded fairly close to Rancer. And I was like, no, I have to make it... <laughs> That's a true. That's different. true. So, yes. Um... <laughs> that was less of a... Less of an actual jab at you and more of actually what I think Oryx would think in that mm. moment. <laughs> Regardless... <laughs> of how it, accurate it is. Currently, we have our entertainment dancing. She's being affected by these memories. They are creating an impression on her. It's not... We're not sure if it'll be permanent and everlasting, or something she'll only remember as a bad time but something that affects enough people and she looks down at the nail in the table you understand of course your life, Auric, and she creates a pulling motion, and this silver thread erupts from your chest and lays out across the table, and these nails just <laughs> down. They're 
bigger or smaller depending on the size of the event. So, there's a tiny pin. I believe here you left your daughter for the first time. But here you taught her to read. Here you saved a village from a dragon. And the nail there is bigger. Here you and yours incited a riot within a city, and now the nail is quite big. And you saved the remains of a city. It's a bit smaller because there wasn't any people around. But, and she pours the wine and it flows down. It's like, you've created the river of your life. And it will branch out into others. And she waves her hand across. These streams come out to create lakes and effectively like a, a almost a, a circulatory system um, of the people you've affected, good or ill, big or small. Each person creates their own. One of those with power create oceans. Especially when they're connected with other people of power. So, what is it you wish? Do you wish to create oceans, Boric? I would stand up at this point and. Because I'm imagining this like we're at the long table and this is all on the table in front of me. Um, I would stand up and 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 if you would allow for flavor, just sort of mm -hmm. like it's not I'm not really trying to do much with it other than kind of like tap into the demo, demo, uh, demonstration that she's showing. Mm -hmm. uh, so Oric would kind of like grab the string at his chest and pull it out a little bit more and kind of like walk around the table towards more uh, um, to the other side. And kind of like pulls the string along almost like a tassel attached to him and then hold it up uh and look to her and like kind of like thumb it and pull it to just demonstrate and this is all not meant to be like affecting anything just demonstrate uh turning that one string into several mm -hmm. with a great unity of rivers that I have felt rush of water so cosmic and large. Undoubtedly, it will settle into vast waters. And I only hope not to flood where I do not intend. And she raises a finger. That is the issue, young Auric, tiny godling. And with a sweep of the hand, she shatters the glass that Sloane is dancing in. And creates a pulling motion. You get pulled down as your silver thread comes out. Am I still dancing? Can I stop dancing, please? <laughs> you're, not, you're still dancing. Damn it. Can't <laughs> you stop now? You created power. You created a unity of your alternate self. Such a rush is destructive and short lived, and you see it sweep over Sloane's thread, ripping it to shreds, leaving just tatters. If you do not give up your power or find a way to settle it, this is your fate. <clears throat> Oric, I would perhaps because I don't, he doesn't like the answer. Uh, <laughs> it, there, it, it, no insight checks necessary for anyone. There's a sm small pout on his face uh, as he would just start to kind of walk 
along the table and and absentmindedly starts like just like counting i just start counting the moments the little nails uh and i'm walking back towards slow now counting the nails still this all correlates Definitely. quite well quite well with my uh, universal theories on souls and currency or such and whatnot and then i would stop at sloan take it from someone that knows or as she says knows the dancing stops and the music stops fall to my knees you do and not... i'm crying you do not want your actions your power your deals To drag everyone you know and your people into chaos and death. And she stands up and steps out of the shadows. The upper body of an amazingly beautiful woman. And the lower body, spider. I saw that. Hmm. Do you know my name? Whispers, if I could presume. I would never. Empress. I, well, I look at Teg. <laughs> Seeing the hand. Uh, 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 the, the Lady of Spiders? They've been somewhere once when there was the Lady of Spiders. Uh, and we told not to disturb her. Very wise, Tigaria. I was trying to survive on some border mountain. The last vestige of me. And I was cast down into a pit by your friend. Not you, Tig. I... Uh, it was, uh, two. But that was me when I was bound to certain rules as my place in the cosmos. Now I am here, and no rules apply but those that I give this place. So... Auric, should we let bygones be bygones and continue our meal? Auric the Usurper. I suppose. And with that, she sits down, takes a piece of her meat, this is in her mouth, and we'll end the session. I'm sorry you didn't get to do much, Shannon, but I didn't expect <laughs> you to okay. be here. Then Sean was busy last week, that's, so this is what we that's got. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I enjoyed the story. Every now and then we all have a backseat session, but you, yeah. Yeah. you know, I just had a front, seem to enjoy I, it. Yeah, yeah, I had a front seat session a couple sessions ago, so it was, it was fine. Totally fine. Okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed this session. It was a lot of talky-talky, and it was not a lot of action stuff and there's a lot of magic and lots of uh descriptions of things but uh I, I hope you all had fun i would love to hear everyone's favorite moments from themselves and others i know that you shannon might not have a whole lot that you did but i'm sure you could think of something that you liked um sure. should we does. start with you shannon sure sure yeah uh tell us your favorites and who you let's are let's see uh, okay, uh, I'll do favorites first, then uh, then I'll tell it. Then I'll tell you who I am. Again, uh, wait, let's wait, see. wait, wait. We didn't nope. do this last time because it was silly to do it in a YouTube video. To do who are you at the end? Because people don't shoot into the end of YouTube videos, so I'm we won't do that. Sorry. We'll just be like, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I moments. thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna take me. I'm Shannon. I'm still the community manager of Paradise. <gasps> Boring, but I just say it. Okay, bye. Good job. Um, good job. <laughs> yeah, you got it. 
Um, let's see. Uh, favorite for Tig. Uh, your comedic timing on uh, <laughs> when uh, the Empress asked, do you understand? And Oric was like, yeah. And you're like, I don't. <laughs> your comedic <laughs> timing was just, mwah. it was beautiful. <laughs> just excellent, excellent work. Thank you. <laughs> um, Sean, as always, I so enjoy your descriptions of your just your your abilities you're so good at it you are a real life bard and i just i just love listening <laughs> listening to you uh just describe and create these beautiful scenes so well done uh nova loved the uh the uh way that you um used everybody's happy and sad memories and I, I like i thought they were really unique to everybody um, and it was just, it was really, it was a really cool, um, uh, story piece. So, yay. Um, for myself, um, let's see. Uh, I liked my interpretive dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know I, I it's more of like an, an internal thing like as as this was all happening i was kind of like portraying what i was doing in my head i didn't really explain it a lot but i was thinking about it and i liked what i was thinking so good job brain <laughs> <laughs> i don't know somebody else go <laughs> good job um, thank you yeah i i kind of wanted to end with the reveal of who that person was but then i realized that sarah didn't know who it was i was like ah <laughs> I'll have to explain this for just a second. So, mm -hmm. I feel like I've ruined my ending. That's fine. Alright, anyways. Sean, you're next. Um... <laughs> I'm so mad because I did have one for Shannon. I was very earlier in the session when you were more were able to be more active. And I, I'm, oh, I'm so mad because I can't... I had one. I'm, I'm so struggling. I to believe you. What it was. I believe you. You can text <laughs> um, me later if you remember. <laughs> but it was just something about early on when you were in the prison, first talking with like every uh, or with the, the the lady at some. Okay. But uh, I do I enjoy. Do <laughs> I um. I mean, I guess what I would say for you that I liked is your choice of memories, I'm assuming, um, that, that Nova used there, um, because I wasn't sure what you were going to choose. And when you chose you, the stuff that Nova was saying there, I was like, oh, I remember that session when Auric got mad, really mad at, at Sloane and yelled at her. Um, and that was a really good Sloane Auric moment. So that's a top notch choice. I guess is what I'll say is my Thank favorite you. moment for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> for Tig, um, I do agree with Shannon about the comedic timing. Um, generally, uh, in that, that moment, but also the other moments, I enjoyed Tig being just like completely inept at table manners. Um, and having a, my, I mean, truthfully, my favorite Oric Tig moment was cutting your meat for you. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I really but generally, yeah. But ge <laughs> yeah. But generally, I just really enjoyed taking the space um, and being like, no problem. I could follow all the rules. I'm good to go. Where's the food and drinks? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Nova, uh, this was a really uh, solid Fey court session. Like, like I mm. felt like I was dealing with Fey fully, and it was like perfectly timed all of it to manipulate Auric. Like trusting starting to trust Grunsur was a perfect timing to bring in a real actual fucker, uh this the Spider Queen, uh, to be like, yep, cool. Got what I wanted from you because you were gonna you were being so forthright or not forthright before. And now that you're kind of in a more ameliorating mood, uh I'm going to get you to do something that you were trying not to do the whole time. Um, so that, just good job playing an actual <laughs> fey creature that's like 
what we all imagine is the typical winter wintry thing. Dude, when you um, said when sorry to interrupt you, but when you were like, Oh, it's what my worship was giving me, I was like, Yes! <laughs> Were you so like, it was so annoying because I my worst sat there. <laughs> I was sat there and I was like, "In my, it's so annoying because in Oryx's head, which is also in my head, I was, I was sitting there and I was like, I don't want to t say this. I do not, I don't want to say this, but I'm trying to get some face back in this court. Um, they were accusing me of lying, accusing me of lying. I've not lied once here, truthfully. Like everything I've said has been." truthful even the stuff that i thought i was lying about originally was actually truthful um and i was like all right i'm gonna give them one thing and they better not do what i think they're gonna do and they did what i thought they were <laughs> <do>. <laughs> did it okay i'll ask you after this continue sorry i didn't should have interrupted yeah continue um and then favorite moment for myself uh these um these types of episodes are particularly challenging for me because they are very auric forward and very auric top neat like top of the game auric like the most auric i have to be are in these sessions because they're entirely like elven wordsmithing and fighting uh between you know it was just all of the eloquence was needed and that's very hard to do um and all of the need to be like, you are the smart f face of the party. You need to be able to dive in and out of this conversation. And you need to have the, the, the most, you have to have quips. You have to be quick. You have to uh, try to trick Nova. You have to try not to let get tricked by Nova. Um, <laughs> you have to uh, whole cloth invent uh, Oryx ideas of the universe uh, and <laughs> hope they work and don't turn into him getting embarrassed. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, I think truthfully, my favorite moment was actually when um, Ron Sir was talking about, when, we, I, when Sir was talking about dinner and what dinner was, and I was just really um, itchy in that moment, and I really liked it. Or it was it's just- Itchy? Like very, bitchy. Or it oh, was very bitchy. bitchy. Was it itchy? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? Or it was, was just being an absolute asshole in that moment. Yeah. And I really yeah. enjoyed it that <laughs> yeah it's um and he's like memories are for dinner delightful mm. <laughs> other refreshments like yes good berry and soul of druid <laughs> fucking perfect yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> um all right my favorites uh this isn't necessarily a favorite moment just happy that shannon is a player that is okay to like just go along with things or as long as we did there with like you're gonna dance in a ball for like an hour are you all right with this and you're like you <laughs> enjoying it <laughs> uh so i really appreciate that um i do intend to put more sloan forwardness because some of these cabins will just be hey it's combat from the moment you step in to the moment you try to get out the other side and yeah, that's definitely going to be your time to shine. <laughs> Sarah's like, battle cry! <laughs> battle prods! Battle prods! Battle prods! Battle prods need to nap. Battle I... Prods. I... I love <laughs> Tig just for the... Uh, how do we just put it? Role-playing force of nature. Just like anything you do has a chance to just like completely dismantle or build on a situation by your severe ineptitudes so yeah. when you're like i will just do the thing that Oreg did and put a little cloth down and i'm like i've seen this happen in places before where someone's like i'm gonna grab the cloth and they're not paying attention they pull the tablecloth i'm like she seems like the type let's see how this goes and then yes um and then you're you like can't ah, control nature mm, so it's uh, gonna happen eventually <laughs> so... she just lets you do a lot and then you play along with that really well so i was really really happy with that Again, as I said, your comedic timing was good. Does everyone understand? <laughs> nope! <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was good. And then... Sean. I very much enjoy doing the talky talk in character with you. Because you are... Uh, always trying to like push ideas or get information or, or hide something. And it creates this nice back-in 
fourth, it makes me think of the time where the two dads were having a conversation mm. about things, and it was just, yeah, it's a, uh, it's really, really good to do that. So I'm glad you engaged with the characters as much as you did. Thank you. Now I believe Sarah still has to keep her favorites. Oh, it's uh, your favorite for yourself. Uh, um, Stop trying to get out of it every week. Yeah, it's, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Wow. Thanks. Yes, John, jo join, join the crew. Uh, yeah. Bully you into being nice to yourself. Mm. Being pressure. Do Jesus it. Jesus Christ. Do it now. Take up smoking. Now, um, faster. <laughs> self, self compliment. I think I did good this session with being face stuffs. Damn Happy? right. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll baby, take that. baby steps. I actually <laughs> forgot I had to do one for me. All right, I just finished up you guys, and that was it. Sarah, go. Uh, <laughs> Nova, your descriptive language in setting the scene and the flow in the Fey was. Thank you. It was beautiful. It was really well done, and I liked how you had the interaction with the Spider Queen and Auric with the nails on the table and sort of like laying out the string of his life. That was top tier like just i really enjoyed just visualizing that and i was like oh i was very tempted to go doing, doing. <laughs> <laughs> but i was like no 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 um uh favorite for shannon i accidentally already sent all my favorites to shannon in a message so she's already had a sneak peek um my favorite for shannon was when she was in the ball and got stuck down the hole and was like no, no, it's dark enough, thank you. No, no, it's fine. No more darkness, please. And I was just like, oh. yeah, it was And I had this moment of going, is Sloane afraid of the dark? When she's yes. on her own, I was like, oh yes. my God, is that 100%. why Auric has dancing lights? It, it was just this little moment in my head of just cuteness for no. <laughs> Um, Favourite for Sean, uh, really seeing him finally get his walls taken down a notch and then sheepishly going to the table and pouting about it and having to admit that some of the fae are not as bad as they seem then getting fucked over yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful and it made me very happy yeah. to see him just get taken down a notch and then having to sort of give in and go i guess they're not all that bad just that moment there and i really enjoyed how you played that out and you really resisted it and eventually gave in and it was it was beautifully timed i really enjoyed that so well done <laughs> um and favorite for myself was that fucking tablecloth <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> dice roll was in my favor for comedy today <laughs> but not in <laughs> table manners okay yeah. oh Right, uh, that about wraps everything up. Sean, do you want to let everyone know of anything coming up uh, for Paradise? I know this won't air for a long time, but still, anything coming up for Paradise? Keep an eye out on all of our socials. If you need to, uh, you're looking for, we're going to be presenting a lot more things on YouTube, so I do recommend if you are interested in our content, hitting the notification bell for our YouTube channel, subscribing, liking all that fun stuff. Um, I'm, we're going to be doing a lot more on YouTube, I think, going forward. So, uh, and probably earlier than this, just because I don't know when we're going to post this. But <laughs> um, uh, so just uh, uh, keep an eye out um, and follow us on all socials. There'll be down link in the down below. Links will be down below. Uh, and thank you so much for, for, for hanging out with us. And we hope you'll hang out in paradise some more. Okay. Everybody Yay. wave. We're going to go now. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Oh. That's not a wave. That's a... <laughs> <laughs>